Thank you, members of the jury. Thank you for being here today. <laughs> the jury. Uh, Courtney did a great job pronouncing my name, so I won't repeat it. Just don't call me Felipe, like you wouldn't call it this town Knoxville, okay? <laughs> so, uh, our company, AnyRoam, provides Wi-Fi roaming for academics. Where is the clicker, by the way? So, uh, the service is called EduRoam, Education Roaming, that's what it stands for. And uh, if you are a faculty student of staff from a university participating in the EduRoam service, and you're going to another university that is partic participating in the EduRoam service, you get instant access where you go. So, encrypted and authenticated. So let me give you an example. This is at University of Tennessee. So you walk on there, you are a faculty from I don't know, University of Kentucky, which is participating in the Edrome service. You get instant access, just like you would get with your cell phone, just over Wi-Fi this time, and it's free. So we have a, a lot of universities participating, a lot of um, states, large state schools, Ivy League, private schools. We're starting to see colleges, um, high schools are starting to join. Geographically speaking, it's all over the US. We have a little hole there in Nevada, we're working on it. But there's a lot of desert there, so. <laughs> uh, as far as the daily users are concerned, we have an exponential adoption. You know, 35,000 travelers using the service on a daily basis. It's quite a bit. And also, let's not forget, EduRoom is not just in the US. It actually started in Europe. I brought that in. in, in in the US, not on the boat, you know, as I was working at the University of Tennessee. But uh, it's all over the world. So if you're a faculty from one university, you can go anywhere you want in the world and get free Wi-Fi and instant Wi-Fi. <coughs> so really, that's all great, but it's for faculty, staff, and students. The rest of us, we have to deal with, uh, with this. That's Market Square. So which one do you join? You know, is it encrypted? Is it a guy that's trying to get my information? You don't know. So we thought of that. We're like, how could we move EduRoam to the general public? And we did. We called it EnyRoam, same name as the company, that's the service. So the way it will work, you will register with us with social credentials, text message, uh, credit card. And from there, we will give you a, a, a personal key that will be stored on your device for a long time, for as long as you want. And then once you have that private key, you can join Wi-Fi networks that are enabled. So we start by having that in schools. Schools have a problem with public Wi-Fi. Yes, they, they, they have each have a different system. So with that one, you can roam. You can be like an edge roam person, basically, but you'll be a private citizen. You can you can think of that for parents, for uh, alumni. You know, students have four years of edge roam, and then they don't have it anymore. So you could give that, give that as an alumni benefit. And then, eventually, you can move on and get it to football fans. When you tailgate, you can have access, you know, privileged access to Wi-Fi, access to Wi-Fi server. And eventually, if you have enough people, you can spread that to small businesses, coffee shops, restaurants. And if you dream big, the entire town can become an any room enabled town, and you can just walk everywhere you want with your credentials. So how does it work? To be $3 per device per year. Providers don't pay anything. They already provide internet access and Wi-Fi. It will be valid at any room hotspot, and your first year will be free so that you can test the service. What are we looking for to push our development? So we need some app development, because our app can, can get some, some love there. <laughs> it was not a self-criticism. Uh, we need some back-end development to charge users the $3, for instance. And finally, we need some sales force to go to schools and convince them that they can actually turn use any room as one of their visitor guest access. So, and actually, what we would like to do is to turn Knoxville into the largest and coolest Wi-Fi hotspot in the world. Because, by the way, there is no other town that has that. So, if we do it in Knoxville, it will be the first one. <laughs> Thank you for your time. members of the jury. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so official. Um, so
So how would this be different than services like Boing Boing and, um, and other commercial services that provide Wi-Fi in a somewhat universal basis? Correct. So the, those systems um, actually are somewhat proprietary. This is using only standard technologies. So it is vendor agnostic. You can, you can enable this in most any Wi-Fi hardware. So you don't, if, if you think about like Bongo or even Xfinity, it, it is vendor specific, so this is not. And so how does that work? Are you basically running the data across other networks and paying them for the data? How, how oh, good question. Yeah. Uh, we only provide the authentication. You, are, you have your authentication, then the access point will use the protocol, which is called either 2.1x, the WP2 enterprise. Once you're authenticated, the provider decides on what they do with the traffic. It doesn't change anything on the, on the back side. If, you are, if your provider is AT&T, let's say, you have the traffic will still go through AT&T. You, you'll, be, you, you'll be running a regular visitor network like it is normally. We are, we are really, the idea is to simplify access to guest, guest network. So if you think today you go on Market Square, you have maybe 20 different hotspots. It will, the, the bottom layer, the internet access will stay the same, it's just the access that will change. But won't these data networks, if you're wildly successful, if any room becomes the most popular way to access Wi-Fi, won't these data networks um, start to come back to you and say, hey, you need to start paying us for... Um, we are not charging anything. Yeah? We're right. charging just for you to have an identity. Mm -hmm. We're not charging for you to access the service. Mm -hmm. We're simplifying the access to the service. Because if you think of it today, let's say I'm a, I'm a coffee shop. I buy a, a, a Linksys access point. Sorry for the brand. Uh, and so you, you turn it on at your, at, at your place and you, just, you go there and you, you just enable the little web, web authentication for guests. Well, instead of doing that, all you will do is type the IP address of our server and you will accept people with a different credential. In the, today you may actually ask people, what is your Facebook identifier? Well, we use a different one. So the, there, we are not interfering with any of the providers in that respect. And so then what's your business model? The $3 for, for to give you the key. Okay. We give you an identity for $3 per okay. year. Per year. Per year. So does it, it, to go back to your coffee shop example, yes. until you take over the world and have everybody paying me $3, how do I go to a coffee shop that has that turned on if I'm not a $3 payer to anyone? Correct. So our strategy would be that first we will go into schools and turn any room on in schools. Because they are, so you go to the school, school like University of Tennessee is actually piloting any room. So we take over the management of their visitors. Because schools have, by government requirements, have to have authenticated users. So we do that on their behalf. Now they go on, on they go into schools and they have an any room identity. Once you have this this mass of people using the school, that's where it will trickle down to the businesses. And, and, well, and they have that too, though? No, so you, you, we actually, on the, when you, we find a profile on your, on your phone or on your laptop, we actually put Edgeroom as the SS, as the network name, so that you, you join UT on the Edgeroom network and they accept the, the Anyroom credentials. Then, if you go to the coffee shop, the coffee shop will enable Edgeroom and people, so if you're a coffee shop, you immediately have 30,000 people that can come to your coffee shop. It's all the students that have edge room credentials. Right. So, but what if I come to a coffee shop and I'm not a user? So do they have to have two different access points? One for the you, non- You have to have, it, the access point have two SSID, one that can only go to the registration page. I got you. It stops at the registration page. Okay. Thank you, judges. Thank you, Philippe.